Yeah, good day everybody. Roberto here from Premier and Fried Ovens. In this video, following up from uh, the recipe on how to make that Polish video, uh, Polish pizza dough recipe. In this video, I'm going to show you, you how I stretch a pizza, prepare the pizza, and cook the pizza. On this occasion, I'll be cooking it in the Vesuvio 800 gas light oven, um, but you can cook it in any oven that you can get a floor temperature up to about 400 degrees Celsius and you can cook it on wood or on gas on a flame. Uh, these doughs are quite wet and uh, this is a 70% moisture which means it's got quite a bit of water in it which makes it a bit sticky when you're making it but once you throw it on that intense heat you get a beautiful puff of the crust um, and a very light airy dough that still could be crunchy uh, magnificent making stuff. So in this video I'm going to show you now how I stretch and cook a pizza. Okay so we have our dough here and I have some flour. I have a, I use a, a, a flour, 50% flour, the, the double zero flour and 50% uh, rim, semolina rimacinata which it looks like flour. It's not that coarse stuff you buy generally, a coarse semolina. I don't like the coarse semolina. It sticks to the pizza and tastes terrible. But this is a um, a 50-50 mix, it just looks like a double zero flour, it's very fine and um, I find this to be a really good good mix. So I want to sprinkle a bit over these dough balls, put a bit in there, <coughs> that's the dough. That's the dough, you'll see my uh, Polish recipe online <coughs> and uh, this is after about four, four and a half hours of resting which is about the minimum that I would like to see it rest. These are a great size, but anything from here, another two hours, three hours will be fine. So I'm just gonna grab a spatula. So I've got my spatula here. We're gonna carefully take one of these dough balls out. Put it on our bench. Always keep the dough balls covered. You do not want them forming the crust. So always keep the lid on your dough balls. I get my dough ball carefully. I don't want to pop all the air out of this dough ball. So I'm just covering it in that, in that flour mix. I'm going to leave a little bit of flour on my bench and I'm going to show you how I stretch it. So you've got a nice round dough ball. And we're going to start from about a little bit inside one end. Plenty of videos online on how to do this. Push the air to one side. Turn it over, push the air out to one side. Put it over again, stretch that out, and just push the air out into one side. Any, any loose air bubbles, pop them off. Yeah, just push them out. Keep this thing round so it looks nice. And once you can stick the palm of your hand in there, carefully pick it up, push down on the middle, pull it out a bit, and continue to do that, flip it over and just make this thing a little bit bigger. Many ways of stretching. Um, some people lay it over a bench and move it out like that. This is quite delicate. I don't like to do that in case I rip it. This is quite delicate. So I just, the slap method that you see some sailors do, I find works quite well. And once you've got it to a decent size, let it hang on your knuckles. By its own weight, it will stretch. And I think you should be able to see that this dough is almost see-through. It is almost see-through. It's very thin, very delicate. So I've stretched that to about 10 inches. Now we're going to put a bit of sauce on it. Now the sauce I use is a San Mazzano sauce. It's a little bit difficult to find. Um, If you can't find it, my second favourite sauce is this multi pulpa. A lot of um, uh, commercial restaurants use this. It's it's already ground like this. Uh, this I like this one. It's got the basil in it. It's uh, a beautiful, tasty sauce. And like I say, it looks like the sauce I'm using here. So that's a, a good go-to sauce. We put it on raw. We don't cook it. Just open the can. Maybe put a bit of salt in there, and then spread it on your pizza. The San Mazzano, if you get it, come in a whole tomato. You need to put them through a moolie 
um, grind them down into into a sauce like this and then drain it get a lot of the water out of it because it's quite wet and then uh, yeah just a bit of salt raw straight on top of your pizza so you put your sauce on your pizza and um, if you've got some parmesan and i like to put a little bit of parmesan on top followed by a couple of basil leaves and some fiore de latte cheese which i've just got to go grab okay and this is a uh, uh, a fiore de latte cheese which I've diced up into little squares um, I've diced it up put it in a container you're going to get a little bit of milk out of it you want to drain your cheese because you don't want it to be too wet on top of your pizza if you use buffalo mozzarella I don't generally use buffalo mozzarella on a pizza like this because it's very milky and um, it does leave your pizza wet so if you're going to use a buffalo mozzarella i like to put that on fresh if i'm doing a prosciutto pizza or something i'll put the buffalo mozzarella quite fresh but or alternatively you just go to the supermarket coles here in australia and buy uh, the cow's milk balls and dice that up just as good and then just a, a drizzle of olive oil if you're making a plain margarita and then we're going to put that into the oven so I'll just check the temperature of the oven. So let me do that now. So here we have the uh, Vesuvio 800 gas-fired oven. Uh, this is a dual fuel oven. You can use this on gas and wood and you will need an infrared gun. So normally, generally I would turn this on 45 minutes beforehand, uh, which I haven't done on this occasion. It's only been about maybe 20 minutes. So I'm not assuming it to be ready. But um, I've got a gauge temperature here of almost 500 Celsius. My floor is at the moment reading 322 Celsius. So it's not quite ready. Okay, so I've had this oven going now for about 35, because I'm going to check the floor temperature. And I've got 394 on that so I'm going to put the pizza in close enough to 400 we want the floor to be around 400 and we want to leave that flame on high um, so I'm going to take this door off and we're going to put the pizza in so to put the pizza on the peel I suggest you get yourself a perforated peel um, because these this dough is so sticky um, and quite thin especially when you put the sauce on it you need quite a bit of flour so it doesn't stick to your bench. So we're going to get a bit of this flour, bring it up on our peel, and lift our pizza up, slide it on, and then stretch it to the size of our peel. As I mentioned earlier, these are 12 inch pizzas, um, 250 gram dough balls, so I'm only making a 12 inch pizza. So it's on the peel, and then I'll shake that, and you'll see that any excess flour will come out underneath it and now we'll put it in the oven. Now once your pizza's got in the oven, we get a turning peel, which is one of these. This is uh, about an 8 inch diameter, you can get a 9 inch diameter, they come perforated or unperforated, not that important. And pizza's gone into the oven, and I'm going to let you watch this now, and we're going to wait for it to start to puff and form a bit of a crust. So we're going to wait 20 seconds or so before we touch this pizza. And as we see it puff, and we start to see some colour on the side closer to the burner, And we know we've got a bit of a crust because when we lift it it's not sticking to the floor for example if it's sticking to the floor do not touch it once you get a bit of color grab in there and start to turn your pizza like that so 
don't leave it for too long because it's going to burn on the burner side. So keep your eye on it, keep rotating it. When you put the pizza in the oven, the spot you put it on is the spot you need to leave it on for the whole cook. If for some reason, because it's going to suck the heat out of that stone and cook your bottom. If for some reason your floor wasn't hot enough, or you're not getting enough colour on the bottom of your pizza, move it onto a different part of the stone, and then you'll start to get the heat out of that part of the stone. But in this, uh, this particular oven, the floor is extremely thick and well insulated, so we get a pretty good, pretty good base out of it. So that hasn't taken long at all. I'm going to just move that to there and I'm going to grab a tray and put it on the tray and show you this pizza. So there you have it. Neapolitan's pizza. Soft, airy, crunchy, well cooked underneath. The oven wasn't as hot as I would have liked it to be, and I did rush this video a little bit, so I normally get a bit more char. You see other videos, you see a bit more char, and I should have left that oven on a bit longer. But it's uh, it's well cooked. The, the, the longer, the crustier your bottom, uh, the hotter the floor, sorry, and you get a bit more colour on your base, it'll be a bit more crunchier. Sometimes you eat a Neapolitan style pizza and you see they're quite floppy. Um, they don't cook their bases as much. This one's not bad. This one, um, if I pick this up, you can see it holds its weight and like I said, it uh, mightn't look it on camera but it is cooked. If I do a close up of that you'll see it is cooked and that's my main Neapolitan pizza. So I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, on how to stretch and cook a pizza in a gas fired oven and uh, my name's Roberto from Fineri Woodfire Ovens in Melbourne, Australia and uh, yeah if you like this sort of content please subscribe, leave a thumbs up and I will think of something else to do. For this particular oven, my next video on this particular oven is going to be how to maintain the oven. Because it's gas and you can use wood, um, there is some servicing required in any gas oven. So uh, look out for that one if you're interested. And um, for now, thank you, goodbye, all the best, ciao.